Hi everyone, it's Sorkin. Today we have a problem when we are given an input number, for example in this case n is equals to 7, and we need to return all possible full binary trees with n nodes. So the value of each node is equals to 0, and also we are given the explanation what's the full binary tree. The full binary tree is a binary tree where each node has zero or two nodes. So for example, in this case, when n is equals to seven, we have five, we have five possible ways how we can construct full binary trees, and we are returning, so we are we can return them in any order. Okay, let's solve it step by step. The first requirement is that uh, it's a full binary tree so we may have so we should have zero or two nodes so the, it means that the, our input n should be should be odd right if it's even if it's equals to zero so it means that in this case we are returning empty result right away what's the second one second one is let's say that the n is equals to n is equals to five right so we are taking odd number five and uh, so for the five what how many binary trees we are going to have we are going to have this scenario when we have zero zero and we have here this is our first binary tree and this is our second binary tree so we are going to have zero 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 and uh, so we are going to have here zero so it means that we have to two possibilities right this is the first one this is the our second one so what we can say is that the, when our n is equals to 5 so for the left and the left child and the right child right left and the right so for the first case how many how many child we have how many nodes we have on the left subtree we have only one node and the, for the right we have three nodes right and the, for the second case when the n is equals to so for the second case the, it's reverse right we have three on the left and uh, one on the right so let's take another case when the our n is equals to seven right so when the our n is equals to seven what we have here we have for our left and right again we have our for our left and right we have one one on the left uh, subtree and uh, five on the right subtree right so this is our first possible case another possible case is three on the left and the three on the right and uh, five on the left and uh, one on the right right so we are starting from here so we are incrementing by so we are incrementing by two for, for the left so we have one three five this is how many nodes we can have on the left subtree and again we are incrementing we are decrementing by two for the right five three one so five three one we are we have uh five three one for the right so now let's take a look at the so how many when our n is equals to three right so for in this case we are solving a sub problem when our n is equals to three when our n is equals to three which means that the three nodes we may have only one possibility right only one possibility to have a full binary tree so it, in this case it equals to one how about in this case when our left is equals to one and the right is equals to five when our right is equals to five right in this case for this five how many possibilities to have a binary tree we have two possibilities one three and the three and one so it means that uh, we have here we have here two possibilities the same way here right so five how many possibilities we have two possibilities so we are taking two so two plus one plus two gives us gives us five right so five possibilities to have a full binary tree when n equals to seven so in this case what it does look like it looks like a recursion right it looks like a recursion when our n equals to five so basically at each step what we do we are with the increment of one we are starting for the left one and for the right we are starting n minus two right n minus two equals to five and then we are recursively incrementing 
for the left and the decrementing for the right and we are solving the sub whatever the sub problems is here so for example in this case we are starting with the one and with the five for the right and we are solving the five and when in n equals to five right and then we are incrementing for for left is equals to three and decrementing for right is equals to three and then we are recursively calling when the n is equals to three and the same way we are we are doing here when we are at the for example when n equals to seven we are incrementing this to five and this one we are incrementing to one at this point we are solving a problem when the n is equals to five and the n is equals to one and we are returning whatever results we are getting one more improvement that we are going to do to this algorithm is let's say for this scenario right when it when left is equals to one and right is equals to five so right is equals to five so it means that when the n equals to five we have already solved this problem and we are trying to solve this problem the, the exactly the same problem here so we are going to use a memoization we are going to create a map a hash table where we are going to store our in our key we are going to store our nodes number of the nodes and the value we are going to store a list that all possible all possible combinations so for example let's say that for this scenario when n equals to seven we are first solving when n is equals to five we are storing that here and in the list in the value we are storing that the results that we have already got for the five and the next time when we are trying to solve the same for the this five we are get, we are going to get that from the memory instead of recursively solving the same problem again first thing that we do we are creating a hash map where key is our n and the value is the three nodes all possible three nodes for that n and uh, in our me main method so what we do first we are checking that the if that n is already in our in our cache in our memo if it is then we are returning it right away and we are not exploring that option and the next one if it's not then what we do we are creating a result that we are going to return where we are storing all our all possible all, all, all possible uh, combinations for our full binary trees and uh, then we are checking that the if module of n is equals to zero it means that it's even so we cannot make a full binary tree from out of it so we are returning empty result if it's not if the this is our base case if our n is equals to one so we are creating a new tree node and we are so we are adding that to our result if uh, if not then what we do we are going and recursively calling our all possible all possible uh, full binary tree function so for example in this case let's and we are calling that the, with the increment of two let's say we are starting with one right so we are starting with one and uh, we are starting for the when our n is equals to seven so we are starting when the left is equals to one and our right is equals to five and then we are recursively de decrementing here so we then the next call would be three and the three right three for the left and the three for the right and the last one is going to be five for the left and the one for the one for the right so we are recursively calling and the forming our left subtrees and the right subtrees and the next step is that the, we are going over our left and right subtrees and the, we are creating a tree node and the setting our left subtree and the setting our right subtree and the adding that to our result so adding a to our result as we exit this loop we are adding that whatever let's say that the, we have solved when the n is equals to three n is equals to five or whatever so we are adding that to our memo to our hash map and we are returning a result so what's the time and space complexity for this case the time complexity without using a memoization it's exponential so it's a two of n divided by two because we are solving the problem with the we are our increment is by two so n divided by two and also space complexity is determined by the number of the recursive calls so it's going to be also exponential a two of to the power of n divided by two but after applying after using a memoization so we are decreasing our 
we are decreasing our time complexity we are going to have n calls at most and our space complexity what is determined by the again the number of the recursive calls and the number of the the size of our hash map that we are using here in both cases it's going to be of n okay uh that's it for today hope you like my content if you like it please hit the like button and subscribe my channel see you next time bye